Do you guys remember when I said that things were going well and the only thing I was concerned about was our financial situation? Well, I've been tested on that assessment of mine and it turns out it isn't the only thing I need to worry about anymore because um, we've been struggling since we last met because of injuries, left, right and centre. Since we last met, Ramato has had a lower back stress fracture, Kevin Turner then pulled his thigh and then Nazano got injured within a space of three days which is not great when you're already missing Brian who's your best striker so we then had a few issues though mind you Lozano's injury came in a match so it wasn't a major one it was just annoying to have these problems turn up and become an issue Chanting has become injured again and Manuel who I didn't even want to be using has also been injured Mind you, the expected total of injuries we were to be expected was 80. We've uh, had 25 so far. So perhaps it's not as bad as fear would be. I just wasn't expecting the injuries that we did get to happen. And the players that have been missing days, you can see a lot of them have missed a load of days in the last 12 months. Well, Motto's only injury came in a period of time I did not need the injury at all. And with Kevin Turner also getting injured as well, it meant that my two best centre-backs were missing for at least one game. But let's go over the games we've had since we last met. We've also had our youth intake preview as well. So, can I get someone to cheer me up? Well, we lost to Kieta by a goal to nil. And Alex Lopez scoring the only goal with this effort was frustrating. Especially when we lost the number of defenders ahead of him. So let's go back and see the defenders that were ahead of him. And who could have stopped this shot from coming in. 1. Blasco 2. Ordenez It's not even as if it was a defender that should be stopping him Ruben's behind here and Manuel's there So that's 4 people that could have potentially done something about that We lose 1-0 anyway And when Manuel is having to start for me And now admittedly he's getting better But when he has to start As a starting centre back When he's not really that good You know things are going against you But again It wasn't our day we are missing Brian as well. We are missing a load of good players. And when the other players who I am expecting to do well are not doing well, it gives me a lack of confidence in the players I should be trusting. Especially when in the next game, we lose the game to Antiqua, who at the time were in the relegation zone. And Abraham scores the only goal of the game with that effort. And again, this is not ideal. Tona was back in this game, and this time I brought Manuel on. Manuel had a better game than Tona, which is not a good sign. And it makes me wonder what on earth is going on with my team. And is Raul Mato really that vital to our performances in the league? When we had a next game against Sevilla Atletico, we lost because of his corner, which we didn't clear fully straight away. That's a great a goal. And I just can't say it's a bad effort. It was a really good finish. I just wish that we weren't having to worry about injury crisis and all that stuff. And this is with Mato being the only major player missing at this point. So I wish I knew why we we're doing so badly suddenly. But I can't give you a straight answer. Brian was coming back from injury. So he couldn't start straight away. It's just unfortunate that we lost. Though, admittedly, they were by far the better team here. Though, at least we won the next game 2-1. And I was concerned until this goal came in from Brian. We had a few goals that rolled off offside before this game. Before that goal. And Monty Joe were the team that I was hoping we could beat. They have literally not won a game so far this year. Lozano making it 2 was great because we gave up a goal. And I genuinely thought at one point when this goes in... Are we really about to lose another lead? Thankfully we didn't, but it was not great to say the least about the fact that I genuinely had to fear that going into this match. We then took a mob bear and lost 2-1, but we did take the lead and I was honestly very excited when Lozano scores this goal because I genuinely thought, okay, we're going to win this game. We're going to do good things against a very good mob bear team who are trying to get promoted themselves. Then they scored twice in about five minutes and... um. Caballero gets both goals. The second goal is unforgivable though. Because we are in possession. Velasco gets caught on the ball. And Caballero scores his second of the game. I should have taken him off before at the moment. Because he actually had a scare before. 
And I think it was him that actually lost the ball initially for the first goal. So the fact he lost a second goal for us was not great. But he had a 7.7 .7 rating. And yeah, it's just unfortunate. He was already that good. So I generally had no real reason to take off until that point. And by that point, I've already made my substitute. So it's not great. Our next game, we lost 3-2. And I'm just going to go straight into it. We lost quite early on because of this goal. That was scored by Castro. Boli Alicizu. I said it wrong. I know I said it wrong. But they beat us. And when they're tuned up at half time, things are good against us. And I actually changed things up as a result of going behind. I went from the 4 3 3 to the 4 2 3 1. Chenti scored this goal from a free kick to give us hope. I thought, okay, that's a good chance. Then we have a corner and we and we score from it. 70 minutes in. Martin with this finish. I'm thinking we have a chance. We can actually rescue a point here. Then they score from his throw. And uh, yeah. Yeah, Ray plays it in the middle. And as Pinsua scores the winning goal with four minutes to go. And I am sad. And Mrs. Lee, Tona got two assists in this game and he was running the show. I just wish we were doing better and we didn't have to rely on stuff like that to beat us. It could have been worse, though. It could have been 3-0. So, it's not like we were terrible throughout the entire game. We were just terrible in the periods where we considered goals. But, it is what it is. I have to realise that my 4 3 field formation might have been found out. I need to change things up again. So, when we take on Mantle Real and take the lead inside 11 minutes, I'm happy. Because Tona, giving us the opening goal, is great. Then we scored a penalty in the 80th minute of the game. But we're down to 10 men since the 21st minute of the game. They get a goal back from this corner. And if he's missing that, that's incredible. But he didn't. Two things to note here. They missed a penalty. We were down to 10 men inside 21 minutes. Now here's a question. I thought because he got the ball, it was a good challenge. Turns out it's not. And I'm going to go back and watch this again. Is it because he's gone with two feet? Despite getting the ball and he's apparently caught the player? Or is it something else? I want to know your reasoning for this. I want to know why you think that would be a red card. Because I don't think it is. Personally, because of the animation telling me he's got the ball. Even if he's gone two feet in first. But yeah, it's just one of those things. I thought he got the ball. And yeah, the fact he is trying to be my player. And Sergio Gabari, not Sergio Gabari. The fact it was Goodwin Bahari doing that and getting sent off inside 21 minutes is not going to bode well for his future with me. But then they missed a penalty and Mendoza's in goal for this game because I just had enough of Sanchez messing up. And when they missed this penalty because Mendoza saves it, yes, he's tipped it over, I'm delighted. Because Mendoza is so young, I'm giving him some first in football even if I probably shouldn't be. But we got away with it here. And admittedly, this is one of the worst teams in the league. So I can probably take that risk more than I could do otherwise, I think. But yes, Ramon Mendoza did really well. Got 7.6 effort racing, despite the fact he conceded later on. And yes, I am giving a player of this quality a start in my team because of Sanchez being a bit of an idiot and giving up too many opportunities that I really felt he could avoid giving up. So, should I be concerned that I've gone down this route? Or am I doing the right thing by giving an 18-year-old a chance to replace his senior colleague, who's now 34? Thoughts down below, please. I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on that. But since we last met, we've had seven games. We've lost five. We've won two. And we're now down to ninth. And it's not great. We are only four points off the playoffs, mind you. And of third place, to be fair. So it's not like we've completely dropped off. We're also now only seven points clear of the relegation zone. And six points clear of the relegation playoffs. So with 16 games to go, I really do not want to be caught in a situation where I am finding myself in a relegation scrap. I do not want to be in this position at all. Especially when the board want a top half finish still. It's almost as if they don't pay attention to the media, isn't it? It really is. But yes, top half finish, that's what they want. A beginner B plus so far. So they like the fact I'm working with the wage budget. And they like the fact I'm playing possession football. The supporters aren't as keen. But they are also not caring so much about the league finish. So potentially that's a thing. 
And they like my possession football as well. So clearly something's right there. The developed players using the club view system hasn't really been fulfilled just yet. But I feel like if I was to start playing the younger players, which I have been doing already, it will eventually get better and better. But I can't generally say that's going to happen just yet because of how many players we've still got in the team that could develop us and help us get a higher league position. That being said, we've now got 1.1 million pounds in the red and we are struggling financially. So happy days. This is our youth intake preview. We've got three strikers and apparently we are still appearing to be short of the required standard up front. Despite having three strikers potentially coming through. Goalkeeper's not great. Defensive midfielder's not great. Even if it's the first one we've seen so far. And neither is the attacking midfielder. The fact we've got fullbacks, wide midfielders and wingers on a D is not great. And the fact that we've got three centre-backs and they're all rubbish is also terrible. What is happening here? Oh, and also Luga decided to try an off me a job interview, which actually surprised me a little bit because I didn't think that my performances at Real High End was that great. But apparently it is. And given that they are a second tier club, that's surprising to me. Though they have got better facilities elsewhere and they've got more money than us. So maybe I should not have turned this down. But then again, I'm turning this down because I want to be winning everything with Real High End. And also Lugo are expected 18th, their 19th place. They sacked their manager. Just going to say this here now. Not so keen on that. Especially when they've just been promoted. So take that as you will. The fact that the B teams do not count in this is also concerning. So clearly, they're actually quite bad. They're 19th players. I'm just going to say they're bad, okay? Also, going to talk about Javi Mayano again because he's actually got his coaching badge and he's improving. I tried to convince the board to get him on a new coaching course and they said that we're too hectic at the moment. We can't afford to lose him for that, which surprised me more than I want to admit. But there you go. He's a great assistant manager and I think he's worth all the money we're paying him right now. Even if he's been paid, I think, slightly more than me. £25, but that's about it. Either way, though, what I'm going to do is end this here. I hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves. I hope you guys will like and share this video and that you subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a lot. What do you think of our season so far? What do you think of the Youth Intake Preview? And should I be concerned for the future? But anyway, until next time, goodbye and well, good night.